Good morning, or I should say afternoon, Physics 30. I hope you guys are having a good day today. So today we are going to be looking at our lesson on electric charges and electrostatics. This, ladies and gentlemen, is the first lesson on our unit of forces and fields. Um, please excuse how I'm, uh, what do you call it? Uh, uh, overexposed here, really bright lights in here. I got the window of my office right back there. So, and it's sunny out. All right. So ladies and gentlemen, we are going to be starting our first chapter with focusing on electric forces and fields. And then on to chapter two, we'll be looking at uh, magnetic and electromagnetic forces and fields. So that should be pretty fun. So ladies and gentlemen, today with electrostatics, uh, we're going to be looking at when charges are not in motion. So that's the nice thing about uh, electrostatics. The word electro applies to your electrons or electricity and statics means stationary. It's a really nice thing about a lot of science vocabulary is break it down into its roots and you pretty much have the exact meaning of the word. So ladies and gentlemen, Think back to previous years of sciences, put a big star beside this. Remember, similar charges repel each other. So two negatives are going to push each other away, or two positives are going to push each other away. And objects with opposite charges are going to attract each other. So a positive and a negative will attract. Sounds good? All right. So that should not be new. I hope it's not new. Okay. Other review from previous years, um, stuff that you will have definitely seen before, uh, conductors and insulators. Now, remember that conductors are going to allow electrons to flow with ease. So most of these are going to be um, metals, as they allow valence electrons to flow nicely through them. So the thing about these is that your charges in a conductor are going to evenly distribute. Sounds good? All right. So if we have negative charges, so uh, electrons, for example, and a surplus of electrons, they're going to distribute themselves nice and evenly, evenly throughout that metal. Now, ladies and gentlemen, insulators, these do not allow electrons to flow with ease. These are your glass, plastic, and rubber. So a charge is going to cluster. Okay, they do not distribute. So you could, if you have an excess of electrons, you'll have a bunch of negative charges all bunched up in one area. They're not going to flow nicely through the whole object. Sounds good? Okay, so I hope those are not new to you, as those should have been uh, talked about in previous years of science. So ladies and gentlemen, I want you to put lots of big stars here. Now, for those of you who have taken Chemistry 20, um, this will have been talked about quite a bit. Those of you who, in your first unit, uh, those of you who have taken Chemistry 30, um, you will have seen this topic in um, the third unit. Um, and will have been talked about in Science 10. So this, and this is coming back again. So very, 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 very important. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, electrical charges is always to a transfer of electrons. Only electrons, ladies and gentlemen. Positive charges are protons and they can't move. So ladies and gentlemen, protons can't move from one to the other, except in our last unit when we do nuclear reactions, but that's a different story. So when we're going to be dealing with anything other than nuclear reactions, you're not going to, the protons aren't going to do anything. They're going to stay there. They don't just move around. The electrons move around. Remember in the structure of an atom, how electrons are on the outside and the nucleus is on the inside, made of your protons and neutrons? Protons and neutrons don't like to tend to leave the nucleus. Okay? Electrons can leave. 
protons cannot. So what this means, a negative charge is caused by excess electrons. A positive charge is a shortage of electrons. Neutral has an equal number of protons to neutrons. <laughs> neutrons, excuse me. Electrons, whoa. Where'd it go? I'm back, okay. There we go. Protons equals electrons. Sounds good? Okay. So ladies and gentlemen, if you are having any questions with this particular uh, concept here, make sure you come see me because it is going to come up again and again and again and again. Cool beans? Cool beans. All right. So ladies and gentlemen, a little bit of a practical application of this uh, grounding. Um, it's the process of connecting a charged object to the earth or ground. So it'll cause the grounded object to neutralize. So for example, if you have a house and uh, this symbol here is equal to a ground wire. Yeah, and your, um, what do you call them, electrical circuit diagrams. Uh, that's what your ground wire looks like. And um, it would connect the house or building to the ground. And then if your house builds up a surplus of electrons, well, guess what? The ground is going to be mostly neutral or have a huge store of, of electrons. So, and so that would mean these electrons here can just scoot through the wire into the ground. Sounds good? All right. The opposite can happen as well. You have your object. There's the ground. Well, if you happen to build up a complete lack of electrons, so that means you wind up the positive charge, um, and the ground, once again, excellent source of electrons, and the object is grounded, you can absolutely have electrons come through the ground wire into the house or object in order to make that object neutral. Sounds good? All right. We're not going to talk about grounding a ton. So it comes up a bit, but not much. Okay. Switching gears. We're going to look at three different ways in order to charge an object. All right. Okay. So Ladies and gentlemen, the first one is charging by friction. This is transferring of electrons by rubbing two different objects together. So for example, if you wear woolen socks and you rub your feet along the carpet, you are going to build up a surplus of electrons. The carpet will transfer electrons to you and you can go zap your sibling and pass electrons onto them. So rubbing your socks on carpet is a fantastic method to charge your um, objects. Okay. You can also take um, a piece of fur, okay, and as the example says, and you have a plastic rod. Yes, I did borrow these from the school. I'll be bringing them back tomorrow. It's Sunday today. And then, well, for me, it's Sunday, whatever day of the week it happens to be for you. These are a decent Harry Potter ones, hey? Wingardium Leviosa, you know, it's the swish and flick for Wingardium Leviosa. Yes, Harry Potter fan. So... If you take the plastic rod and you rub the plastic rod on some fur, then you build up a negative charge on the rod and a positive charge on the fur. Well, you can't really see that one as well, unfortunately, but if you were to rub your hair onto a balloon, okay, well, what happens is you're gonna wind up with electrons, a bunch of electrons being transferred over onto the balloon. So because the electrons are going to leave your hair and go over to the balloon, your hair is going to build up a positive charge. Now, when your hair builds up a positive charge, is what are the hair, individual hairs gonna do? They're gonna repel. So that's why your hair stands on end. Cool, hey? Yeah. 
Now, sadly, I don't have a balloon. It doesn't work, doesn't work so well with the fur to give my hair a positive charge. But if I had a balloon, I would absolutely do that in the middle of the lesson. But sorry, guys. I don't have a balloon. All right. Now, charging by induction. So what this is, is if a charged object is brought near but does not touch, keyword not touching, okay, a conductor, once again, has to be conductor, the electrons on the neutral conductor are going to rearrange themselves um, based, that should say based, not bases, on a attraction or repulsion to that object. Okay, so essentially the object conductor is going to temporarily become polar. For those of you who have done chemistry 20, this is going to look an awful lot like London dispersion forces in objects, okay, or in, in atoms, like uh, bromine, for example. So, or iodine. Bromine and iodine are very good examples of London dispersion forces. Anyway, so one end of the object is temporarily going to have a positive side and temporarily have a negative side. The conductor is still neutral overall. It hasn't gained or lost electrons, but it's just rearranged the positions of these electrons so that it's temporarily negative on one side and temporarily positive on the other. All right, let's look at how this would go. So we have an object here, ladies and gentlemen. That is going to have, well, we'll say three positives and negatives. We're going to pretend they are randomly evenly distributed throughout that object. Well, what happens is we're going to bring a positively charged rod close to this structure. Once again, no contact. But when this positively charged object is there, what are the electrons going to do? Repel. Repel, excuse me, it's Monday. Oh, it's not Sunday. Electrons are going to retract to that positively charged object. So you're going to have the electrons start to hang out closer to this rod. Okay, because the electrons are moving over towards the rod, the electrons are going to be moving from here over to here. So that means this end is going to have be positively charged because the electrons moved away from here. And the electrons moved over here. Sounds good? Okay. Well, when the rod itself is removed, these positive and negative charges are going to go back to being rel as the way, pretty much the way they were, randomly and evenly distributed again. Okay. So this is after the rod is removed. So it is going to go back to being its, itself. Okay. So this process here, ladies and gentlemen, is called charging by induction. Sounds good? Okay. Less than subtle hints. Charging by induction often shows up on theory questions on diploma exams and other assessments I may decide to give you. Sound good? All right. Okay. Now this next one, ladies and gentlemen. Charging by contact or conduction. Lessons that'll hint. This one shows up on tests quite a bit too. Now this is when two differently charged objects are going to be brought into contact. So they are going to touch. When two objects are going to charge, going to be in contact and their charges are different, this is when electrons are going to flow away from the more negative object until both objects are the same. They have the same charge. So how earlier you were rubbing your socks on the carpet to build up a charge, 
Well, you are building your ch a charge by rubbing your socks on the con on the object. That's charging by friction. When you go and touch your sibling and zap them, that is charging by contact or conduction. Sounds good. So if you go, you know, rub your socks on the carpet and zap somebody, you know, you can explain them the physics behind it. I don't think that'll make them less uh, or any more impressed with you, honestly. <laughs> So ladies and gentlemen, it is based on the conservation of charge. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to talk about that one in a little bit. Um, but what you need to know for now, it is principle number seven on your data sheet. So remember how we mentioned previously that um, on some numerical response questions, you're going to get, okay, oh, well, what? Um, physics principles are being used in this scenario. They always have at least one in the diploma exam. They're referring to these physics principles here in the back of your data sheet. So we've already looked at conservation of momentum right here, just four. And now conservation of charge is number seven. Sounds good? All right. So ladies and gentlemen, uh, let's get a diagram on the next page to show how charging of con um, by conduction works. Okay, so we have a ball on a string, ladies and gentlemen. This thing is going to be neutral. Okay, and we are going to have, once again, three of each just to make it easier to draw. Now, we are going to bring a rod here that has a charge of plus four on it. Now, remember here, this is now going to be induction. This is going to be charging by induction. Okay. This is going to result in attraction, electrostatic attraction. So what's going to be attracted to this positive side? Your electrons. The electrons are going to travel across that conductor and be attracted to that positive charge. Whereas over here, because electrons have left this side and moved over here, you're going to get electrostatic attraction. Okay? All right. So these objects are now going to come into contact. This is where we're going to have your charging by conduction. Now, remember, ladies and gentlemen, electrons flow until both charges are equal. Protons don't move. This positively charged rod has a lack of electrons. So that means what's going to happen? We've got a plus four here. We've got neutral here. Plus four and zero. So ladies and gentlemen, negatives are the only things that are able to move here. Okay. So what is going to happen is because this is neutral, this is positive. Electrons are going to flow until both are equal. So what would happen if we moved one of these electrons over? Well, if we moved one electron over, this guy would wind up with a charge of positive one. Now this guy would wind up be going down one in charge because it's gained something negative. Well, they're not equal yet. So another electron is going to go over. That means it is going to become one more positive because it's lost one more negative thing. Well, this guy is going to have gained one more negative thing. So he's going to go down to a charge of positive two. Well, now look here, these charges are now equal to each other. That means that this object is then going to repel because this guy now still has the three positive charges, but it has lost two of its electrons. So that means this guy here now still has one, two, three, four positives, 
but has picked up the two negatives. This guy now has a charge of positive 2. This guy has a charge of positive 2. Okay? Okay. So these guys are now going to repel. Okay? Because they are electrostatically the same, similar, same charge now. All right? Okay. That's the key, guys. Electrons are going to transfer until both charges are equal. All right? Okay. So, ladies and gentlemen, let's look at some math. Less than silent. You've got a question like this on your assignment. Hint, hint. All right? Cool. All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, what we have here is a question where we've got three objects, W, X, and Y, and they have different charges, and then we're going to be bringing them into contact with each other at different rates. Okay. Now, personally, I like to draw these um, diagrams out because I'm a very, very visual person, and I really like to be able to see what is happening. So before we do any uh, math there, what we're going to do is I'm going to give you the equation that you're going to use when you come up to scenarios like this. It's not hard, but it's not in your data sheet. So you must memorize this. Doesn't sound a hint. Memorize this. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is an example of your principle number seven. So your conservation of charge. So, ladies and gentlemen, what you're going to have is you are going to have your um, charge on each object after contact is going to equal your total charge. divided by the total number of objects. So this, ladies and gentlemen, this blue boxed equation here, that is what you need to memorize. So the charge on each object after contact is going to be the total charge divided by the number of objects. Okay? Okay. So I'm going to draw out the scenario because I like drawing out the scenario. Da, char object W has a charge of negative 2 microcoulombs. Okay. Object X has a charge of negative 9 microcoulombs. And object Y has a charge of plus six microcoulombs and object Z okay, has a charge of plus 12 microcoulombs. All right, so I've drawn out my scenario here, or at least what I have available. Objects Y and Z come into contact with each other and then separate. Charges W, Z, and X then come in contact and are separated. What is the charge on each object at this point? Well, first we are going to have object uh, W and Z coming into contact. Okay. So this is step number one. So I'm going to do this equation first. So my charge on Y and Z, I'm just going to say... charges y and z are going to equal my total charge over number of objects. I've already written out my equation. And write out your equations to get full points. And so plus 6 microcoulombs from y plus positive 12 microcoulombs divided by two objects. So that is going to give me a total 
as positive nine microcoulombs. Now, this equation, you can use any unit for charge you want, so long as they're the same. So because everybody's here in, is in microcoulombs, we'll just leave it all in microcoulombs. That's fine. Unless you really feel like converting all units to coulombs, but I wouldn't bother. Keep them in microcoulombs. Then what happens is after this first contact, I don't, I don't want to draw an arrow. So after first contact, Y, that is the messiest Y I have drawn all day. So this now is plus nine microcoulombs and Z is also plus nine microcoulombs. All right, so now for the second step, charges W, Z, and X then come into contact. So I'm going to switch colors again. So W, Z, and X are going to come into contact with each other now. Okay. So for step number two, we are now going to have our charges on, we're going to say W, X, Z, total number of charges divided by number of objects. So we have a W is negative two microcoulombs, okay, plus negative nine microcoulombs, plus our positive nine microcoulombs. Sounds good? Okay. There are three objects. And when you put that in your calculator, you are going to wind up with a negative 0 0.6 microcoulombs. Okay? All right. So what is the charge on each object at this point? Well, what we have is, I'm going to scroll down a little bit so I have some space. There we go. So we have, let's look at what we got. Well, W, X, and Z are all going to have the same charge. Their charge is all going to equal our negative 0.6. Now, negative 0.6 repeating, how many sig digs do I want when you go back to the original question? All right, two sig digs, ladies and gentlemen. So, oh, it's, uh, that blue line is uh, wanting to stay with the page there. Okay. So, there we go. Tech issues. So W, X, and Z are going to be negative 0 0.67 microcoulombs. Okay? And then Y is going to have a charge positive 9.0 microcoulombs. All right, guys. All right. So ladies and gentlemen, if you guys have any questions, make sure you hunt me down and then it'll come see me in focus. I recommend that you guys now pause the video and go and do these practice problems in your workbooks. Uh, make sure you are comfortable with those and then come back to this point in the video and we're then going to start looking at electroscopes. In class, uh, we have a really fun electroscope activity I want to do. And um, you guys are actually going to get to play with these things. So they're, they're quite fun. Yes, you're going to have to wear your mask. And yes, you're going to have to disinfect them. Now when we're finished. Sounds good, guys. All right. See you back here in a few when you guys are done those practice problems. I need to pause this. All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. I hope that you guys found those practice problems all right. 
So what we're going to do now, ladies and gentlemen, is we are going to look at a useful tool to determining electric charges called electroscopes. Now, these guys are instruments used to detect the presence or nature, so positive or negative, um, of a charge. So this is what the diagrams generally look like. Uh, this is an example of what one looks like. And um, I just grabbed one of the ones we have from school. And I tested it before I brought it home on Friday. <laughs> of course, now it doesn't work. I can't get it to work. The, the leaves of foil are uh, sticking together and I can't get them to unstick. Um, so there's some static electricity or something in there that I can't get them to stop sticking to each other. So it's not working. Well, remember your meme from the lab? If it's if it's green and wiggles, it's bio. If it stinks, it's chemistry. And if it doesn't work, it's physics. So this is definitely physics because my, my, my equipment isn't working. So, but at least uh, you can get the idea. Uh, you've got the gold foil and on, attached to a metal rod with a head and it's supposed to be nice and insulated in there so you don't get contaminants or other forms of static, but we got that anyway. I think the ones we have, it's, I, I didn't bring home the best of the electroscopes. I brought home a crummier one. So when, when, we're, when you do this in class, um, it will definitely have been with a better electroscope than this. So ladies and gentlemen, so here's your electroscope. Um, and that's what they look like. And the whole thing is going to be um, conductive material. And there are your foil leaves. And if you want a really good electroscope, they're going to be gold foil, but we certainly aren't on that kind of budget. So I don't even know what these are, these foil leaves, but these are definitely not as good conductors as if we had gold foil leaves, but we got to work with what we got. So ladies and gentlemen, we're going to look at some of the different scenarios um, that you can use with your electroscope. Okay. All right. And in class, we're going to do an activity with the electroscopes and you're going to get to play with them as well as the um, plastic rods and the fur, all of which I lugged all these things home. So then we could, I could film today's video and now of course it's not working. So I can't use them in my video, which makes me sad. All right. So ladies and gentlemen, a positively charged rod is going to attract electrons to the head of the electroscope. Okay, so you're going to have a positively charged rod that is going to come near the electroscope. What that is going to do with those foil leaves is it's going to, so you're going to see them move apart. Okay. All right. What you would supposed to see on this is the, the metal leaves would kind of separate. Now, the reason why this is the case is because the electrons inside your electroscope are going to be attracted to the positively charged rod. So the electrons are going to migrate up from the leaves, up through the stem and up to the head of the electroscope. Now, down here, remember protons, do protons move? No, they don't. We're going to wind up with a positive charge down here in the leaves because the electrons have left. The electrons have scooted their way up and are attracted to the head of the electroscope. So because these leaves are positively charged, what are they going to do? Repel. So the leaves are going to move upwards. Sounds good. All right, I'm gonna see if one more time if I can get this thing to work. Maybe it's we're on live camera, if I'm on camera and I'm trying to make this thing work live, it might work, you know? So you rub the rod on the fur, build up a nice negative charge. I have fur flying around my office from this rabbit skin or rabbit hide. Okay, guys, let's see if this is gonna work. No, yeah, it didn't work. Of course, physics lab didn't work. It's classic. <laughs> All right. So ladies and gentlemen, let's look at the opposite here. 
a negatively charged rod is going to be brought near the electroscope. That was the one I was trying to simulate there, but no, it didn't want to work. So what are the electrons going to do with that negatively charged rod? The electrons are going to repel. So that means electrons are going to build up in the leaves. The electrons are going to leave the head of the electroscope and they're going to go down into that foil. Because the electrons are trying to get away from the foil, they're going to leave a bunch of protons behind. So that means the head is going to be temporarily positive. The electrons are going to scoop down to the foil. The foil is going to become negative and they're going to repel because the leaves are going to be of a negative charge. They're going to push away from each other. Sounds good. Okay. So ladies and gentlemen, um, what is very handy to do is if you pre-charge an electroscope, you can determine the charge of other objects as well. Okay. So that is particularly handy. So what we're going to do is you're going to take your electroscope. Okay. And you're going to ground it. Now, what grounding an electroscope means, ladies and gentlemen, is making sure that there is no other charge on this. Um, I tried this with this one. It didn't work. All you got to do is just be sitting, you know, feet on the ground, and then touch it. You are a great source of electrons, and this should clear your electroscope of any other charges. Okay? So it should be grounded. Um, all right? Okay. So once your electroscope is grounded, then we can create a charged electroscope. So what we're going to do, okay, you have your electroscope and we're going to bring a negatively charged rod close to the electroscope. Okay. Now, ladies and gentlemen, what are the electrons going to do? Hmm. The electrons are going to try and get away from that negative charge, right? But remember, this is grounded. Where are the electrons going to go to get away from these negative charges? Anywhere they can. So that means that your electrons, ladies and gentlemen, are going to leave. They want to get as far away from possible from this electroscope, from this negative rod. So they're going to leave out through the ground wire. Now, if electrons are leaving the ground wire, what charge is going to be left here on the electroscope? Positive. Sounds good. Okay, so then what's going to happen is you are going to remove the ground first. Okay, remove the ground first. Okay, so then that way the electrons um, aren't going to try and come back. Okay. So you remove that ground first. Then once you have removed the ground, then you can remove the rod. Oh, that was a neat way of writing that, putting the E on the second line for no reason. Okay. So then ladies and gentlemen, once you remove the rod, you are then going to be left with a positively charged electroscope. Okay. The leaves will have moved upwards because they are all now positive. Okay. And they're repelling. So ladies and gentlemen, if you want to create a positive charge on an object, you are going to use uh, like this on your electroscope, you are going to use a negatively charged rod. All right. Okay. So ladies and gentlemen, what would happen if you want to put a positive charge onto the rod? How would that work? 
excuse me, positive charge, negative charge, what would you do? If you want a negative charge, you are going to do something very similar. You are going to use a positively charged rod. And that means electrons are going to be attracted to it. So if you bring a positively charged rod to your electroscope and you hold up your, put your finger on to um, the head of the electroscope, and then you bring a positively charged object there, well, electrons are going to be attracted to that. So you're going to have electrons running in from the ground and gathering at the head. Then you remove the ground and you keep the rod there. And then after the, before the ground's removed, then you move the rod after the ground is gone. And then you should have, assuming that you have a working electroscope, um, wind up with a negatively charged object because the electrons will have all been attracted to that positively charged object. And they would have come to the object from the ground. Sounds good? Okay. Lesson's little hint, is that my question? Okay, so a couple of examples of how this would work. So if an electroscope is positively charged, determine the charge on the rod. Okay, so we know that this electroscope has a positive charge on it. Now, so that means everything on this is going to be positive. Okay, this guy's an optimist. So. When a rod is brought next to this object, you notice that these leaves have moved upwards. They were already partially out and then they moved farther out. So what these, what's happened with these leaves is they're repelling. They're repelling more. So if the leaves are repelling more, that is because the leaves have become more what? More positive. They're already positive and they push farther apart way. They've got to become more positive. So if the leaves have become more positive, what is happening to the electrons? The electrons are leaving the leaves. Yeah. The electrons are leaving the leaves. So what it means is that the electrons are coming up this way. The, what, the electron, there's still electrons in there, right? We're not completely depleting these things of electrons. But there's going to be more electrons that are going to travel up this way to make these guys more positive. Okay? So your electrons are going to move away from the leaves to make leaves more positive. So ladies and gentlemen, that means that this rod here must be positive. The rod itself must be positive because it is attracting electrons. Right. It is attracting electrons from the leaves up here. Sounds good? All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, let's look at another example. So, here we have an electroscope that is negatively charged and a positively charged rod is brought near the electroscope. Determine what way the leaves will move. All right, well, we have a negatively charged electroscope and we are going to bring a positively charged rod towards this guy. Now we need to think about what the electrons are going to do, okay? What are electrons going to do in the presence of a positively charged rod? they're going to be attracted to that. So we know that we are going to have electrons going up here and we're gonna have some electrons hanging out up there. The leaves are already negative, 
Okay, so if the electrons are going to leave the leaves, I can't help it. It has to happen. So if the electrons are going to leave the leaves, what is going to happen to them? They're going to become less negative. So if the leaves are going to become less negative, what are they going to do? Upwards or inwards? They should move inwards because they are going to be attracted to each other more than they were previously because the electrons will have left. Okay, or not all the electrons, some of the electrons will have left. Okay? All right. I know electroscopes are tricky. Um, we are going to be doing um, an example with these uh, working ones in class. Um, so funnily enough, I actually tomorrow uh, from the time of filming this is when we're going to be doing this. So ladies and gentlemen, hope you guys enjoyed the video. And uh, please give question number 10 on page 84 a shot. See how you do. And no fires, injuries, or explosions. Avoid rampaging viruses. And have a good rest of your day. Bye. Now I can't turn this off. This happens every single time. You think I figured it out by now? All right. Bye, guys.